Hi everyone, uh, this is my Zod Dart XL. It's um, running pretty much all stock form. Um, I've just installed iNav 4.1 on it and um, the plan today is to get it up in the air and do an auto tune first. Um, I want to test, give it a bit of a test to see how long it can fly for as well. But at the moment what it's running is a 10,000 milliamp ZOHD battery. I want to test its range a little bit today too and see if I can go past, uh, I think it's about 2k I've done on it only so far so we'll try and look at taking it out a little bit. I have to get you some onboard footage. I've got a uh, Runcam hybrid uh, 4k camera on top of it there. It's I think it's only shooting 2.7k though so I'll add that to the video. Um, it's running a 1.3 video transmission. It's a part on part on system I bought off Banggood. The weather is good. It's a beautiful day, other than a little breeze here and there. It picks up a little bit. You can see the wind sock there is um, it's hanging. It's a slight breeze. So fingers crossed uh, this this craft can take off. I've had a few little issues with it on takeoff. Um, it likes to pull to the to the left. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen. So let's get it up in the air and um, yeah, enjoy the flight. The um, FPV video up in the top left hand corner of the screen, it's, um, I'm not sure whether the camera's got an issue or whether I put a dirty big thumbprint or fingerprint over one half of the lens. So excuse the one side that looks a bit blurry compared to the other, That's, um, I noticed that while I was up in the air flying, so I'm not too sure, I've got to look into that. So at the moment I've just put in a loiter, this is position hold, it's just um, flying a 60 metre circle here um, while I, I set myself up, position myself, get comfortable and put my goggles on. I have noticed with the loiter on this plane, um, especially this plane, it tends to, to drop. Um, it doesn't really hold its position, I'm not sure why. It holds its position, but it doesn't hold its altitude as well as what I'd like. If you have a look at the altitude, you'll see it's slowly declining. Um, which, um, yeah, if anyone can help me on that side, that would be greatly appreciated. So we'll just stay in uh, loiter, position hold for a moment until I sort myself out and then we'll flick it into the auto tune and probably run it um, on the auto tune for um, maybe five minutes or so they say you should uh, do the auto tune uh, moving it left and right up and down for at least 20 times so we'll see how we go so back in angle mode now, so we're, I'm, I'm all ready to go here. We'll stick it into auto tune in a minute and um, start with the tune before we fly out. So this is auto tune now. What I've, I've set my on-screen display up to show me my um, my settings, my roll pitch level settings. That's my PI, PIFF settings. So, um, idea if, if you're doing this, you want to get a bit of altitude, it's, it's a lot better in case you have an issue. Um, and all you do is uh, bank left and right, basically flight like you stole it, that's what they say. So, bank it left and right at, uh, at least 20 times each axis um, until you feel the craft flying nicely. Now, if you have a look at the uh, horizon, the artificial horizon. Now can someone help me here? If anyone knows why it's doing that, is it just because I'm in auto-tune or not? If you see it, it looks very erratic. 
um, it does improve so I just put it down to being in auto tune and auto level um, as well it just seems very laggy very slow to to, to show its its level when it's not level the craft is level but it's not very level and you can see it drifting there's a lot of horizon drift so if anyone can help me there I'd be greatly appreciated because I'm a bit lost with that one it does improve though so I didn't worry about it too much it was just annoying while I was flying seeing it move like that hopefully it's just the auto tune so we go left and right if you have a look at the uh, the settings up the top my roll I'm rolling at the moment so after a period you should see the roll figures change a little bit You've also got to have the craft in acro mode as well by the way. You need to have acro mode on. It doesn't you can't do a tune in iNav in any other mode other than acro. So stick it in acro mode and then flick your auto tune switch. And then um, basically fly it fairly hard with full banks, full turns, full pitch up and down as well. So I did notice the my settings haven't changed much. Um, at the moment it, it, it other than the horizon drift it does fly well it, it did have a, a tune beforehand but I think it's set up pretty good um, right from the firmware update it felt pretty good um, the settings do change you will see them change when I do my banking left and right you'll fit you'll see the roll get more snappier it'll be quicker and a bit more A bit, uh, uh, just a, a lot more snappier the roll, and it's changed there. So we're up to 64. That's, I think that's uh, the the feed forward. I think that that setting is, if I, if I remember. So I'll do some tight turns and go left and right and it should pick up you can see the, the the figures moving a little bit it's tuning itself and it's getting quicker now rolling it left and right when you're happy with your the feel of your craft after a few minutes you go ahead and start doing the, the pitch up and down Now I'm doing the pitch up and down. I didn't notice much change in this. It felt pretty good. It's a relatively docile plane when it is going up and down. It glides beautifully. The, the left and right roll is good. It's got some good snap to it there. I'm ha I was happy with that. And for the for the pitch, you want to get a bit more height. Get as much height as you can, and just give it full nose down, full nose up, full nose down. Just keep doing it until you see some change. I never notice a lot of change. I don't think it changed too much. But either way, I'm I'm happy with the way it's it's flying anyway.
So it's quite smooth now, flicked it out of auto tune. So now we're back into acro again. And we'll go for a bit of a fly. I'll run through a few of the, the uh, stats I've got on the screen in the top left corner here, just for those people who don't really know. Um, up in the very top left, that's the amount of satellites. We're currently on 26 satellites. Um, below that is a HDOP that's, um, I'm not going to explain that too much, but basically the lower that is the more, uh, more accurate your GPS is. Uh, below that acro mode, that's the mode I'm in. We've got the time I've been flying for below that. So I'm going to be looking for at least 30 minutes in this flight. Uh, down the bottom left you've got all the battery stats so we're running at 72% battery uh, it's four cell uh, lithium ion um, battery and it's currently sitting at 14.5 volts um, I've also got one point uh, three point seven per cell at the moment 3.7 volts per cell and below that is basically your um, efficiency stats I won't go into that too much but that's what you want to look at if you want longer flight times the lower you get a lot of this the better and longer you'll fly for so in the middle of the screen you can see the name of the craft below that there's a little arrow which points me in the direction my home is or where I'm standing and uh, beside that is the distance we are away from home base. So if you notice we're getting a bit of cutout in the video at, around this area. Below me here there's a lot of roadworks and I've noticed with a few of my planes I seem to get some poor video transmission in this spot here which I shouldn't and I've got it down, I can only put it down to there's the roadworks and, the, and whatever they're using maybe it's interfering with the the video signal at times they're putting a new highway in there okay carrying on over in the top right hand corner we've got the RSSI up the very top that's your um, video oh, that's your transmitter your signal strength below that is the amount of throttle I'm using I'm currently at 62 which is probably a little bit high um, it should be down below around 60 below 60 even is good Um, under that is the speed we're doing. We're currently at 60, 65 kilometres an hour. Below that is a is a display uh, is a stat I need to take off. That's just the airspeed sensor, which is not on here at the moment. That's why it's reading zero. So below that we've got 160, nearly 170 metres in altitude. As you can see the highway down below, that's um, where I was getting a bit of drop out with my signal. I guess they're using a lot of CBs or I don't know what, rain, what signals they run off, but they're using whatever they've got in their own vehicles and on the ground there, transmitting signals, it's um, probably interfering a bit. So right down the very bottom here, I've got it greyed out, that's just my longitude and latitude. So if the craft goes down, I, I can revert back to whatever that is there and hopefully find the craft by putting it into Google. So currently we are sitting at 1.5, oh sorry I didn't didn't go over that stat, so above the longitude and latitude, below the flashing and below the flashing altitude of 170 you've got 1.5 so that's currently our our distance um, away from us at the moment we're at 1.5 kilometres away so currently approaching 1.7 kilometres Still get a little bit of drop out with the, with the video transmission here and there. I'll still put it down to that it's the, the roadworks going on below 
because it's a it's a full it's a very big area that they're working on down here. Um, Express LRS is looking pretty good. It's between 50 and 60. So currently at 1.6 kilometres away. Want to try and take it a little bit further than this. But I don't want to lose video feed either. At the same time, it's not a good feeling that. If I can get somewhere where there's less interruption from all this roadworks below, it might help because the field is at the back of those hills over there and then basically right below me is the, the real main heart of the of the roadworks Um, directly in front of me there, uh, that's a quarry. You can see on the other side of that hill where the field is. Um, I'll do a fly around there a bit later on. And uh, below us is all uh, sugarcane field. There's a lot of farming around this area. Sugarcane is the main um, source around here of all the farmlands. So currently sitting at uh, 150 metres altitude, cruising along at 70 kilometres an hour. So to the left is the quarry that I was talking about. You can see it directly in front right now. I'll bank around. Um, I just got to be careful. I don't lose line of sight, but I'm up high enough anyway. If I ever, if I do lose transmission due to this blockage from the mountain, um, it will return back to me. So that's a quarry as we pan as we as we roll around. And more sugarcane fields, there's all sugarcane through here. Lovely countryside here. A lot of rainforest. Starting to get a bit of break up now because of the, the mountain maybe blocking where I'm standing. So I'll bring it around and we might do a fly across that hill to the left, I think. I'm currently at 230. 235 metres in altitude, still cruising along at about 70 kilometres an hour.
not sure what they call this hill, whether this is Mount Peter, I'm not too sure. The Mount Peter estate is only up to the uh, other end of the hill there. You can see the housing estate on the left of the mountain, or the hill, whatever you want to call it. So I'm assuming this is Mount Peter that we're about to fly over. Just over 200 metres altitude to get over here. Good range still. Video transmission again cuts in and out here and there, which is a little bit up, uh, unsettling when you're flying. But I've got plenty of height on the craft if it does break up and I'm forced to do a return to home, um, I will. I will be safe. So I'll see if we can get it out a bit further this time. Um, what I want to try and do also is a is test the return to home from a bit of distance out. So we might do that when I'm ready to um, come back. I might just flick the return to home switch and let it fly back on its own. So we're currently 2.4 kilometres away. That's borderline as far as I've ever taken this craft actually. I know it's not a, an overly long distance in comparison to some of the people that fly long distance, but bear with me. I'm still fairly new to this long, uh, to these uh, long range setups. I think what I'll look at doing is try and, try and squeeze out to three kilometres. I'm not going to push it too far because we're down to 38% battery now. Um, there's still a fair bit of life in this battery though, mind you. It's nothing really to worry about at this stage. So almost hit the three kilometre mark here. It still feels good. I'm down to 40%. 40 with the RSSI but I think we'll try and get it out to three kilometers or just over and then we'll hit the return to home switch and let it fly back So I've just hit this return to home switch now and we'll let the plane fly back on its own. I don't know why it says fail safe there, but that didn't fail safe. That was me returning it home with the, with the switch. It gives me a good idea of how it's going to fly in its own cruise mode by itself on its way back, whether it needs adjustments. It's a bit slow, it's only doing 40 two kilometers an hour, I'd prefer that to be up 45 to 50. I guess it's working its way up there. So we've got out to about three kilometers. That's, that's what I'm happy about. That's the furthest I've ever taken, the furthest distance out I've ever taken this Zod Dart. Quite relatively happy with that. I could have pushed it a lot further still, it's just that the battery, I don't want to push the battery either, it's, we'll do this another day and we'll try and get it a bit further out somewhere. So we're down to 33% battery. We've got 29 satellites so that's good. Very good satellite lock, it's running the um, 
M8M, M8N GPS that you get from Banggood. I think it's the 220 that's in there. It runs GLONASS and um, Galileo satellites that can find them both. So that's why I've got 29 satellites. So it's returning to home. This is flying all on its own, mind you. So we're coming back. I'm just letting the, letting the plane do its job. Cruising along at 40. So it's a bit slow. I might bump that up, I think, the cruise speed. What's that? 49. That's 49. It's not too bad, I guess. But it's you can see the throttle for the cruise back is sitting at around 50 to 55. It's currently at 49. 49 to 50 for the throttle input I was flying it mostly at 60 so that could be something I can work on maybe if it's cruises better around 55 to 60 percent throttle that might be a better option for more uh, time and more distance so currently sitting up around 300 meters now in altitude a good strong signal video feeds quite good that's the beauty about planes you can bring them down a lot quicker than a drone as we nose dive down towards the field I'm going to put a bit of music on guys and you can have a listen to the landing as we come in. We'll do a couple of passes around and maybe fly to about 30 kilometres. And then we'll, we'll do a touchdown. We are now down to 29% battery. So here's the overall stats of the flight. Um, you can see we did a max speed of 105 kilometers an hour. We averaged 67 kilometers an hour. Max distance was 3.12 kilometers in away. Uh, distance traveled was 31 kilometers round trip. That's the furthest I've actually flown. So that's a record for this plane. Uh, maximum altitude, we got up to 306 meters um that's pretty much it flight time was 27 minutes so over on page two minimum battery voltage 13.8 so we've plenty of juice left uh, maximum current 40.4 max power 
559 watts. I'm still learning about all this stuff here. Uh, use capacity 6580 uh, milliamps from the battery, which is a 10,000 milliamp battery. Average efficiency 211 milliamps per kilometres. You can see our G-force there we hit, 7.95 Gs, which I guess, not too sure of that one, but there, that's our stats. Okay, so that was a very, that was probably my best flight I'd say I've had with this Dart XL. Um, 10,000 milliamp battery, 26% battery remaining, uh, it's 30 minutes roughly. A little bit on the short side from what I was hoping, but I'm thinking of getting a, uh, a 7,000 milliamp, a bit smaller battery, and just compare the flight times with that on it. But that was good. That was a good, a good, um, a good flight, a good test of its distance as well. Um, I know 3K isn't much um, for some of the some of the people out there doing it, but for that's that's the furthest I've taken this plane, three kilometres out, just over. Um, the, the video was getting a bit scratchy, so um, I did want to risk it and the return to home worked good. So now that the auto tune is done and it's disarmed, um, we have to we have to save it. As far as I know, this is the same way you've still got to do it uh, by not unplugging the battery and logging into iNav and then just save and reboot. And I did see the PIDs change a little bit, so definitely did a little bit of tuning. It felt a lot better on its roll axes. I didn't notice much difference in the pitch, though. It's fairly docile with its pitch axes. So we'll just save it at that, and that'll um, that'll save those those um, new settings in the auto tune. Anyway, guys, that's the end of that. I'm quite happy with the Dart. It's had some issues with its launches and yeah, crashes on launch, that sort of stuff. But other than that, once it's in the air, it's a beautiful craft to fly. So anyway, guys, enjoy. Um, stay safe and keep flying. And bye for now. See you next time.